Nothing happens in your life unless, unless you purpose it to happen. Not even the blessing. If there's no purpose for the blessing, the blessing won't come. Did you hear me? Many of you are praying, God bless me. If you don't have a purpose for the blessing of God, it's not coming. And I'm teaching you faith today. I'm teaching you faith today. Because you have to have a purpose. Why I want the blessing to come. And some of you are holding back on yourself. It is not that God is not doing it for you. It's you are holding back. Because you don't live for the purpose that you should. And that is not your own purpose. That is the purpose of God. God has a purpose for your life. So success, success. God called us to have a successful life. It's not out of the spiritual ordinary. It's the ordinary things in the spirit. God wants you blessed. And that, that powerful message Caroline brought, he did everything to open the door for you. And thank you for saying, think where you came from. Remember you said that? And all of a sudden, I saw myself as the woman that was crying over the feet of Jesus, the sinful woman. She was crying and her tears were washing his feet and she had a long hair and she was wiping his feet with her long hair. I saw myself in that place, Lord, thank you. That I was that sinner. But you turned around and you said, to Simon the Pharisee and the others. He said, here I tell you, her many sins has been forgiven because she has loved much. And one of my prayers this year, I said, Lord, I want to love you more. Not give me more gifts. Not give me more anointings. I want to be able to love him in the same way that he loved me. Which way? He laid down his life. Do you know, if you don't understand God's love, you will never lay down your life. And this is the reason that most of you are still living the way you're living, because you don't understand the love of God. Where he got you from, you should never forget Forget where he got you from, to the place where you are today. And for the Lord, listen to me, to call you saint. Saint, sanctified. He declared and pronounced you sanctified. You're set apart for God. And we should never, as Christians, continue to live our lives the way we plan and what we think but in the purpose and in the plans of God because his plan is already blessed in Jesus' name. Thank you, Caroline, for saying this because I saw this. And I said, thank you, Lord. I have a lot to thank you. I have a lot. I, I want to love you more because of what you have done and where you got me from and where you are leading me. I am following you. Your life should be or should manifest significance in your life. You should manifest that because God is in you and God is the one that is doing the work in your life. You're not doing it on your own. You're not trying to cut off from this and cut off from that. You are feeding from the Lord and God is changing you more and more to be and to reflect more and more himself, to reflect him in your life. I do want to talk about biblical principles, how to succeed in life. Because we are trying very hard to succeed in life. And yet we ignore the principles, biblical principles. If you want to live a successful life, I'm not talking about money, 
I'm talking about every area of your life. Yeah. I read something before. It says that live not to make your presence noticed, but live to make your absence felt. Do you feel when a certain person is not in the house? He said, live for that. Don't live to make your presence noticed, but your absence felt something is missing. Can you imagine when we begin to reach out to that? Was Jesus, when he wasn't there, Everybody start looking for him. His absence was felt because his presence made such a difference. Do you make a difference when you appear? There's a lot to think about. And there's a lot to cooperate with the Holy Spirit this year. But God has a plan to take you higher. Higher than where you've ever been. And he wants to take you to that place, but he actually needs your cooperation. We are called to an amazing life, not just live like the world. Do you know that the world is living the lower life? And you want to take the people in the world who don't know Jesus as your example. Well, everybody does that. Well, you're not everybody. When are we going to get it? That I am not everybody. I've been chosen and I've been separated to live according to the purpose of God and not according to the fashion of this world, which is condemned by God. There's no life outside Jesus. There's no life outside Jesus. You know why I love church? Because it flows, it flows. The church flows in the presence and in the anointing of God where I should be. I quoted the scripture in the prayer in the back today and people say, you know, I'm going on holidays. I wanna, I wanna be refreshed. Can I tell you something? Holidays don't refresh you. <laughs> Smile, please. <laughs> they don't refresh you. You get refreshed in the presence of God. Did you hear me? I said the presence of God refreshes us. He said we wait for the presence of God. If you want to be refreshed, find the place where you can go and stand. And the water of life will just wash you clean in the presence of God. Times of refreshing. Say that with me. Say times of refreshing comes from the presence of the Lord. Times of refreshing comes. What refreshing? He wants to refresh your spirit. Your spirit needs to be refreshed. Why do you go under the shower when you're tired and this? Ah, I get refreshed. I, I, get, I feel it feels good. And can I tell you, it feels wonderful when you are in the presence of God. I'm not teaching your religion. You don't come to church for me. And I don't come to church for you. We do life together. We worship together. We pray together. We united in the spirit. We love God. And we wait on God in his presence, waiting to hear what he has to say. Habakkuk says, I wait and I want to hear what he has to say. Because what he has to say, your whole life is hanging on what he has to say. Not what you are saying, but what he has to say. Successful people do consistently, say the word consistently. 
which most of the children of God don't have it. Yeah, I fasted for one month and nothing happened. Oh yeah, I, I did what the Bible says for a few weeks and I didn't see any change. Well, maybe there is a change, but not in the things you're praying for. There's a change in your own life as you wait on God. Maybe that's the change that is needed more than the change you are praying and expecting. How about that one? Why is he making you wait? Maybe there's a lot to be done in your life, in your heart, in your attitude. In everything that you do, God is doing a thorough work inside of you. Maybe that's more important to God than having your circumstances change. How about that? How about if you are in the midst of whatever going through in your life, you still put your head on the pillow in the night, and the peace of God is rushing like a mighty river over your life. How, how about that? What can you give in exchange to that? Fred talked about worry. Worry. And I said, sitting there, I said, is robbing us. Worry rob, robs us, okay? It robs us because the Bible tells us not to. Well, I can't help it. Yes, you can if you do consistently what the Bible tells you to do. Not occasionally. Not sometime. Not when I feel like it. So you can tell right now which way I'm heading. I'm heading about the three D's for 2024. Write them down. Three D's. Number one, I don't know if I put them in order, but I'm going to give them to you anyway. Number one, diligence. Number two, we all hate that, I know. Discipline. Put it down anyway. <laughs> Show me a child is happy when he's being disciplined. Show me. Nobody. The three D's for this year, and the Holy Spirit start, we were going to kick off this year by listening to the voice of the Spirit and also obeying what the Lord is saying. So what's the three D's? Number one, diligence. Number two, Discipline. Number three, determination. Without this, you will never get anywhere in your life. If you are undisciplined, if you're not diligent, you show up when you want to, you read the Bible whenever you feel like it, which never, and you... Pray if I feel like it. Never commit to anything. Never do anything. And then, God, why aren't you blessing me? Why am I getting anywhere in life? Then when you go to the Bible and read, without diligence and without being disciplined and without having a, a dogged determination to just keep at it, you will never ever reach your destiny. It come up in my spirit and I must say it. God doesn't exist for you. God doesn't exist for you. Change your mind. And you have an attitude and you have a chip on your shoulder. You know, about God. And why isn't he doing this for me? And why isn't he answering my prayers? And why isn't he? And why isn't he? And why should he? When you're not listening to him. Why should he? Why should he? If he told you what to do already in the Bible, even if the Lord himself will appear to you, he is not going to stay to you or speak to you any other what he put in his word today. He's not going to do it. 
Why? Because he is the word. When he tells you not to worry, make a decision. I like what Joyce Meyer said. Worry is like sitting on a rocking chair. Where are you getting? No way. How you're improving? You're not. You're not because you take steps if you want to move. Not sitting on a rocking chair feels good, but getting no way has to change. It has to change. It has to change. God is not obligated to do anything about anything in your life until he sees some commitment on your part and some obedience to what he has already spoken to you. Go back to where you have fallen. Remember, when did your relationship with God was cut off? When did you stop experiencing God in your personal life? I'm not talking about life in the church. I'm not talking about people using their gifts. Even their relationship with God is not good because God's giftings are without repentance and God can use you in a gift but when, you, when your relationship with him is still not good. I don't base anything on gifts. Oh, people say, how can, I, how can God use that person? He can use it because he put those gifts in that person. But what's more important than anything else is your own personal relationship with God. That's number one. Not what others think of me and say about me, but what does God think of me and what does God say about me? If you're seeking honor from people, you will get it. But Jesus said, that's all you're going to get. Did you hear me? If you're after the glory that people speak well of you and people think of you well and you make sure in front of people you perform well so you can get the glory from people, Jesus said you'll get it. But that's all you're going to get. Ask yourself the question, is that all what I want? Do I want people to speak well of me? Only? Or can I have favor with God and man? Which one? Can I have favor with both? Yes. Yes. But there's an application to it. Which oftentimes we ignore. I want the blessing. I want the healing. I want this. I want that. You know, it's recorded in the Bible when Elijah prayed about the sacrifice. And the first time he prayed, he prayed, nothing happened. How many of you notice when you read it? Yeah, it didn't happen. He prayed God that they may know whatever, whatever, and I'm your servant. Nothing happened. So what was Elijah after? Recognition from people. And then he prayed again. Oh God, that they may know that you are the Lord. And then the fire came. Who, you want, who do you want to be recognized by? People? You want people honor? You want people glory? Or you are after God? Your heart is after God. That means you may upset few people. That means, and I'm not purpose, and I'm not talking about going and, and being rude to people. And I, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about often time when we have a desire to serve God and to follow God, Things happen, and most of the people don't understand. And I'm not expecting people to understand what God is doing in my life. But my number one responsibility is to obey what God is saying, regardless whether the people agree with it or don't agree with it, as long as I know God has called me to do what I'm doing, and I'm going to do it, and I'm willing to pay any price to be in the will of God. Psalm 
Say it again. Successful people do consistently what other people do occasionally. It's not what you do occasionally that makes a difference. I give my tithe not whenever I can. Is that sacrificial giving? The answer, I don't want you to answer, I'll answer for you. No. It's not. Does this honor God? No. Okay, I'll do this, this, and that, and if there's any left over, I will. No. No. When you understand commitment, you understand you're going to get hurt sometime in doing what's right. You're going to feel the pain of doing what's right. Sometimes we think if we do what's right, everything will be on a silver platter. It's actually the opposite. Until the Lord decides, yet, now I know, as he said to Abraham, now I know that you actually love me more than you love your son. And because you've done it, and I saw that, he lifted his hand and he said, with blessing, I will bless you. Who can take Abraham's blessing? Who can take Abraham's blessing? When God lifts his hand and swears by himself that I'm going to bless you and I'm going to multiply your seed as the sand on the shore and as the stars in the heavens. Why? Because you showed me that you loved me and you honored my word. Not above your son. Take your son, Isaac. Would, wouldn't he wish that God says, take your son? He could have taken Ishmael. Ishmael is second best. God doesn't want your second best. You hear me? God doesn't want your second best. He wants the one that you love. Talking about diligence, talking about discipline, talking about determination. This is what gives you success. Don't run for success. Do what you need to do and success will come to you. And whatever your hand will reach and whatever you decide, God is already blessed it. What do you do consistently? What do you do when it comes to spiritual life? Do you know, with some people in the church, I've been a long time in the church, and I, we have people here for a long time. I know exactly what they do. I can tell you what they do. I can tell you, I can tell you, and I can tell you with all my heart. Not, I'm not, I'm not going to mention names, but I can tell you. Their tithe and offering, no matter what is going on in their life, they are every week in the church. I can tell you that. They are committed. They are constant. They honor God. They don't check their bank account. They don't do this thing. They are committed. What do you do consistently? Do you come to church consistently? Do you read your Bible consistently? Do you pray consistently? Do you believe God consistently? What do you do consistently that's going to open the door for the spirit of success to cause you to succeed in all that you do? Joseph. What did he do? He was entrusted, second in charge, entrusted. Why? 
because the Lord was with Joseph and the Lord honored him. And the king saw that and he said, I don't know anything except the food that comes on my table. Everything is in Joseph's hand. That's called success. And not only for himself, God blessed the house of his master because of him. Success began to overflow from his life to the place where he was in. He made a difference. That's success. Success is not having money in the bank. Please give me a break. This is what the world thinks. That's not what we think. That's not success. That's not favor. And I don't want that. I want to be successful. I want to live a successful life. I want to have influence. I want my absence to be felt. And that doesn't come without diligence, without discipline, and without determination. I know God is speaking to your heart this morning. I'm not here to impress you with anything. I'm here to just, as a servant of the Lord, to obey and to tell you what is going to set up before you for this year. You have to start cooperating with Him. I asked some people, get into the Word of God and read. And this person said to me, I can't read. I can't read. I can't concentrate. Okay, you can't read. You can't concentrate. What are you doing to help yourself? Well, there's apps, Bible reading. If you can't read and concentrate, have you done something to keep on listening to the Word of God? Well, no. Well, you don't really care. You don't have consistent. You're not a consistent person. Consistency is number one. It's, 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 it's the, the very foundation of success. I need to be consistent in what I do. You don't have to ask, is she going to show up today? You don't have to ask, is this person going to show up today? Because you know they're going to show up. Because you know they're going to show up. Successful people do consistently what other people do occasionally. So, I put that myself. So, it's not what you do occasionally that makes you successful. Can you put that down if you're taking notes? I think it's worth just noting that. So it's not what you do occasionally that makes you successful. God wants you to succeed in life. God wants you to succeed in everything He called you to do. He wants you to have success because success reflects God. Sickness doesn't reflect God. Being broke doesn't reflect God. And I'm not judging any person. I'm not condemning them. I'm just showing you there's a better way to do life as a believer. You want to stay broke all your life? Then keep doing what you're doing. You want to stay sick all your life? Then keep doing what you're doing. I'm here to testify and witness about the faithfulness of God. You can be in old age and still enjoy life and still enjoy blessings and still enjoy health and still enjoy every good thing that comes from God. 
People have a mentality because I'm an old age, I get sick. Stop. That's what the world told you. That's not what the Word of God tells you. Let me tell you what the Word of God tells you. With long life, I will satisfy you. And I will show you my salvation. How about that one? How about that one? Oh, you're going to get sick sometime. Said who? Said who? When you quote something, tell me who said it. Did God say it? You're going to get sick sometime. Now why are you saying it? Did God say you're going to go broke sometime? Then why are you saying it? When God tells us in Jeremiah 17, Blessed is the man who puts his trust in the Lord. What does the word blessed mean? Prosperous. Empower to prosper. God gives you the power to prosper. Now you don't have to go broke. God will increase you. Lift your hands and receive that. God will increase you. 2024, it will be a year of increase for those who are hearing the voice of God and for those who are listening and for those who are obeying. Give God the glory. Stop saying things you've learned, not from the Word. Speak the language of God. Speak the language of the Spirit. You make nervous some people around you. Oh, come on. We can't say anything. No, we can't. Just say what God says. If you only want what God says. If you don't want what God says, then say whatever you want to. But if you want what God says, you've got to say what God says. You are empowered to prosper. Blessed is the man. That's already the power to prosper you is upon the person that made a decision. I will trust God. I will trust God. I will trust God. Nothing is showing me and giving me the green light, but I'm going to trust God regardless of how my situation is. I am going to put my trust in God. And not on the money either. In God we trust. Oh, in God we trust. Now you're not trusting in God. You're trusting in money. That's what you are trusting. America. In God we trust. Where's God? Where's God? You put all these laws against the Word of God. You allow all these things that are against God. And you, then you have the... The guts to put on your money in God we trust. No, you're not trusting in God. Maybe there was one time in history that America trusted in God and all the Western world trusted in God. We need to come back to trusting God. Come back to the Word of God. Come back to the things of God. Come back to the heart of God. Where are you, God? Exactly where you left Him. You're the one that's gone away, not God. He's still waiting. And He is still raising up teachers and preachers to tell you, get back into the things of God. Get back into being diligent and seek the Lord. Get back into discipline. Discipline yourself. Don't give your body what it wants. But I don't feel like doing anything tonight, so just do anything watch any movie, feed on anything else. Where's the discipline in that? Oh, I fell into it. Why did you fall into it? Because you never planned to do anything else. You've left a gap in your life that says, use me, use me, and the devil comes. Come on, I'll use that gap. I'll use that gap. But if you fill your life and there's no room for the other wicked demon to move, then all your life is protected by God. Stand up with me, please. 
So it's good to say it's not what you do occasionally that makes you successful, but what you do consistently. Are you going to make a decision this year? I want to become consistent in the things of God. And one more thing, let me just say. Please, this year, let's work together. Don't work on your own. Don't be by yourself. Did you hear me? Together. Say with me together. Say together. Say we are better together. Don't ever work against your brother and sister. Don't ever work against your leaders. Don't ever speak a word against your leaders. Whether you're happy with them or not happy with them, that is not your business. God will deal with people, not you. What's your responsibility is love them and pray for them. Thanks for tuning in and we hope you enjoyed today's word. If you'd like to know more about what we believe, who Jesus is and how you can know him too, head to our website, voicetothenations.com.au. And if you'd like some prayer, you can also head to our website, voicetothenations.com.au forward slash prayer requests. Have an amazing day and we hope you tune in again soon.